Hello, uh, Anjana, are you there? Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. I've made you the co-host. Okay. So Hello. you can also see that you can start sharing uh, the screen. Main thing is that. Yes. Just, just give me a second. Could you see? Yes. Perfect. I can see it. Okay. Awesome. Just give me one second. there and try presenting okay works like a charm one second yeah it, it works perfectly i can see it let me make it uh, dia is also here dia are you there on the call oh uh, hey yeah i'm there i'm okay. sorry i don't know why the camera is still not working my camera is still not working yeah no it's not i'm sorry Okay, do try it out, then we'll figure it out again. Just try it out. Are you done? Yeah, I'm trying. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, Anjana. 
were you talking to me no no i was just talking to dia so unfortunately your camera is not working today got it so she was supposed to host i think she's going to be hosting it for camera starts working if not then i'm there not even sure about that uh so how's it going are you all prepped for the webinar mm yeah it's kind of exciting and uh, nerve wracking at the same time because <laughs> i don't know what kind of questions i'll be uh, facing today so that's there for the presentation i'm i'm prepared and i'm well and good so yeah i'm glad i'm really happy about that um but genuinely like our webinars are uh are absolutely informative and a lot of people who just want to know about that particular information are there so that's the niche that is here so that's great see even before, i think already a lot of people have started joining uh, a couple of them that sounds uh, good i would just want one help if you can hear me can you send me all the documents you the mean the documents and the intro oh uh, yeah, yeah yeah i have one doc only so uh, okay. i'm and i'm available in the back end so that won't be an issue okay. just my camera is not working uh, and give me a second I'll... no worries I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Anjana. If you're speaking, hi. Sorry, <laughs> I was muted. So, could you just like quickly tell me if you can once I scroll through the PPT and the presentation, could you tell me if it's moving on screen for you or if it's like, just to make sure? Is it? Yes, it is. You have to make it so smaller and keep it here. What's happening? Okay, that's there. It's working. It's working. Okay. Yeah. Now you'll have to scroll it a little uh, below. Um. Yeah. That one. Those two ones. Yeah. It's kind of like a little Adam and child doesn't go up. <laughs> it's working right now, right? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Just wanted to see that. Yeah. So I, I'm sure the Amma sir told you uh, the webinar just that uh, we have an intro five minutes. We wait for our participants. We I'll give a I'll give a little brief about you and what this community is about. Then okay. the stage for fifteen to twenty minutes at max, so you can cover up the PPT and basically more than just talking about the PPT, you will be sharing your thoughts and ideas so that people can take some learnings. And then we open the stage for thirty minutes Q and A. and that is how we wrap so we try to keep it like a very small uh, within an hour webinar so we don't end up using a lot of time of everyone no fair absolutely i'll try to run through this quickly i'll just even though the, the some points look elaborate when i explain it it's going to be really short so i'll try to so uh, i'll be mindful of uh, wrapping this whole session up in as in the the ppt side of things by in 30 minutes Perfect. so we'll try our best I'm kind of excited because uh, I'll tell you one thing that keeps happening here. Uh, I hope I'm not stuck. Dear, just let me know whenever you feel I'm stuck. No, no, no. You're not. Your voice is clear. Okay. Your uh, video is clear too. Okay, super. Uh, Can you just uh, you also check if you are able to share the screen? I am able to share my screen, but I won't. No, I am not able to disable for participants. I am a participant now. you'll have to make me a co-host yeah one thing let me first of all do that uh, uh anjana can you one second stop uh, sharing the screen if you don't mind yeah okay i think anjana you the host can you see if you got all the rights for being a host yeah I have got it. I'm making you the co-host with me. Yeah, and I'm also putting you and Anjana as the pin. So. Did Anjana have any chance like leave the room? Okay. 
anyhow can you at least just uh, check if you are able to uh, sorry my whatsapp is on it's all right Uh, uh, I will, will, yeah, I can share my screen. Yeah, but ideally, I want you to only do the back end right now, and then Anjana can take it over. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm only doing that, so I'm just checking if I can, you know, ch uh, see the uh, share the screen and everything. Yeah, yeah, you're able to. So, just, uh, so now you're there, and I'm just checking. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, done. Take care. Perfect. In five minutes, you can put a reminder or in ten minutes to everyone, and then we can start. So Anshan, I'm kind of excited today because uh, most of our audience who come here have one complaint that, you know, we want in one language, the webinar. And ideally, most of our, our speakers have been North Indian or from the Western zone. It has always been either Hindi or English. So probably this is our first webinar, which is going to be purely English. So I'm excited too. <laughs> A little I'm bit really excited. Excited. <laughs> a little bit of South Indian flavor there too. <laughs> no, but that that's great because we always wanted uh, a lot of insight from the Southern Indian market of understanding how that entire thing goes on, right? No, absolutely, absolutely. And so Pate, Pooja has actually, Pate Pooja has taken over the market that I am in at the moment. It's like, there's no <laughs> It's just like the sales team is super aggressive and the restaurant owners also like, they're used to one common name. It's like, it's just yeah. a mandate. <laughs> The name really sticks for everyone. I, I feel that really works in our favor a lot. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, one second. But uh, more than that, uh, they are, we are also coming to Kochi very soon. Like in February, there is an event called Salkar, which okay, is Salkar. the Restaurant and Hotel Association. So it's, yeah. a, it's the 50,000 association uh, members. Yeah. And we are expecting 10,000 people. So people just coming there to... Uh, Meet everyone. Yeah, so I'm looking. Unfortunately, I'm not coming there, but my team is going oh. to be there entirely. Our co-founders, everyone are going to be there. Love that. Love that. Yeah, I think that's that's the, the, yeah they're the restaurant association. Right? So all over Kerala, all the restauranteers are going to be there. Right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. So it's a three-day event and it seems uh, it's on Marine Drive. So I'm sure it's going to be a huge event. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to having you also there. If uh, I get invite for sure. <laughs> We are going to, we are going to. <laughs> Absolutely, we are. Looking forward to that, super exciting. Uh, yeah, we are too, because this is probably our first um, event in Kerala. Oh, okay. Uh, we're looking forward to a couple of them in uh, small associations, but that didn't work out. Right, and so coming to Bang. Yeah, I, I think the southernmost we have gotten yet is uh, probably Hyderabad. Oh, but okay. We haven't really crossed that entire border yet. Welcome to Kerala. I'm sure you love it. I have heard it's a lovely place. It is, it is. Absolutely lovely. I'm, I'm very always interested and fascinated by the food uh, that is there because a lot of, besides seafood, also the variety of the, of the cliche South Indian that we North Indians think about is so different. Very, very, absolutely. And you go to any part of Kerala, it's very different. It really? So, yeah, yeah, the North of Kerala and us, like I'm from the South of Kerala. So the okay. North of Kerala has an entirely different cuisine that we don't associate with at all. And wow. South of Kerala has a very different cuisine. So it's very uh, interesting. I think that, that entire point is going to be a great highlight for our menu designing. So I'll tell you one thing a lot of people kept having that we've talked about finance, franchising, uh, marketing, automation, <clears> everything. But they were like, hey, what about food now? Like, you know, yeah. how, how do we differentiate our food from all the... 1000 people are standing in the market in that city absolutely even if it's same how to make it different or price sensitive or or cost effective for them and reduce wastage so a lot of questions around menu started coming up and uh at the I hope we can answer today. sorry i hope we can answer them to an extent today i am look I, I i feel yes because i saw the ppt and i think that kind of answers a lot of things <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm going to give the stage to Dia now. Uh, yes. We will join in back in like five, 10 minutes when everyone starts joining in. Like you can see, people have started coming. She's just going to run some ads and videos uh, just to welcome everyone to them. Okay, uh, Dia, uh, you can start sharing. The stage's yours. I will start sharing like after five minutes. That's the oh, most idle time usually. It's just yeah. 51 years right now, so we'll start doing that later. Okay. 
Done. Sounds good. <clears throat> Uh, till then, Shivani, you can just check. Uh, I've sent you everything if you need anything else. Uh, uh, so I can just do that. And Sorry, can you do me one favor? Uh, yeah, yeah, our please. names are Pete Pooja. Can you please change yours to Diya so I can change mine to Shivani? Uh, I'm unable to find which is like which one's mine, unfortunately. Okay, wait, I found it. I found it. Oh, uh, yeah, done. Let me. You want me to change mine? No, no, no. It's all right. Done.
take care of take care everything of from everything. ordering to websites to management of our riders, management of our tables, our gate, etc. I think the biggest issue was always the interface uh, in terms of how the waiters would take the order. You know, with Paytunja, we are able to do it on tablets. That speed of uh, taking the order and then serving the food uh, made it quite easy for us. Other than that, I think procurement between different outlets, when you have many outlets, you have to order from the base kitchen. Again, Tate Puja makes it quite easy to order from the outlet, right? As an owner, it makes it very easy for me to read reports. One of my best experiences with Tate Puja is my conversation with Parthiv. When I came back to Parthiv and said that, look, I need one person to, to take care of the entire solution, he kind of said that we just built the entire solution for you. So uh, everything that we wanted, he just picked it up as a challenge and said, I'll just build the entire universe, whether it was the iconography, whether it was the customization of the pages, whether it was the integration with various channels like Swiggy, Zomato, etc. Another thing where Facebook was very, very uh, actively kind of supporting us was where we wanted automated label printing, for example. And this is something which nobody in the industry has. Pay Puja decided to kind of build the entire application for us from scratch. So the waiter calling device, which is right here, is pretty unique. A customer would just press a button, uh, you know, the waiters would just come. If you ask anybody in our team, I think they've been extremely uh, pleased and extremely happy with not only the product, the product keeps evolving, the service that Pay Puja delivers. So in conclusion, I'd like to say, Pay Puja, with my money, I want to invest in you. And... Uh, Hopefully, I can become a partner in your company soon. Bombarded with notifications, Como makes staying on top of every customer message easy. Hi, I'm Ankur and I'm the retail head of Winnie Cakes and More. We started in August 2019. This was when we opened our first company outlet in Zirakpur, Punjab. So we are uh, India's fastest growing 100% eggless baking chain. I think the introduction to Pate Puja happened somewhere around 2015-16. That was a very brief introduction we had. So when we again started a new journey with uh, you know, Winnie Retail and we started our own outlet in 2019, the first question that we had is what kind of a pause are we looking at? Because we knew our vision, we have to open multiple outlets across India. So Pate Puja was uh, something that, you know, instantly clicked and uh, we opted for Pate Puja. So we are pretty happy in that case. And, you know, it is a cloud-based software. So sitting here in Chandigarh, we get an idea of what is happening all across India in all our outlets. And we have presence in 23 states. Then uh, it also works offline. So there are a lot of tier 2, tier 3 cities. For example, we have an outlet in Baramula in Jammu Kashmir. Or we have one in Arunachal Pradesh. There is internet problem, connectivity problem. So this is one of the uh, few calls which work offline. And obviously when there is an internet connection, then the data gets sent. And currently everyone knows post-COVID, there is a lot of uh, business that is coming to Zomato and Swiggy. So now that we have an integration of Zomato and Swiggy in Tate Puja, so it makes you know our life pretty easy managing the menus from there running, you know, discounts across all these tools. Secondly, I would say we are in part managing the customer data because it's mandatory for all our outlets to take the, you know, contact number of the customer. So all that analysis, that report is there for one to explore and uh, that, you know, makes it a little really unique. But the best part is, you know, there's a team who is there to help you out in understanding the software, getting it implemented because implementation is the major part of running a, you know, successful franchise chain or even your own outlet. I think there is somebody who is uh, backing your food business currently. My recommendation because I have, you know, seen it there for, and I've used it for the past seven years. You should definitely try to your future. And I'm sure you'll not regret going forward with Pate Puja because they are also evolving every day. For Winnie, Pate Puja is the uh, Hello, everyone. I am going to just take a second. Anjana, I hope I've also made you the co-host. Um, yes, you have, I believe. Perfect. A second. There is some issue going on because uh, Dia and my IDs have gotten changed, I think, on Zoom. But welcome everyone to Pate Puja's new webinar, last webinar of January, which is on easy menu designing with Anjana. Anjana, I want to extend a warm welcome and thank you for doing this webinar with us. Um, I don't know how many of you were there in our pre-webinar giggle because 15 minutes you were just discussing about everything around the need of the webinar. 
Uh, everyone knows the drill. So before we do uh, that, and even Anjana, the drill is basically, uh, we will be running a poll. And also all our participants, please introduce yourselves. Where are you from? What is your restaurant name? What is your outlet, your name? So that we can make a very interactive session. Meanwhile, I'm also launching the polls. So please make sure you put the polls too. I hope everyone can see the poll. You cannot see the poll. Uh, Dia, can you see the poll? Yeah, hi, I can see the poll. And a lot of people are already filling it, so that's also visible. Okay, great. Um, On the screen only. Yeah, it should be there on the screen. But meanwhile, please, everyone, do introduce yourself. Uh, so we know who our audience is, and we can also talk to them easily. Hi, Nimesh. Uh, we are someone from Jamnagar. We have Abhijit from the Chicken Forks. Uh, Pranay from Rollings. Hi, Pranay. I think I do remember you from last webinar. We are someone from Pune. Hari Priya. Please do keep introducing yourself. Hi, Sakshi. Oh, we are someone from Vancouver. I'm really excited for that. Love that. <laughs> We are someone from Dubai, uh, uh, Harsha from Maharashtra. We have Hyderabad, Jaipur, Jodhpur. I love the, oh, we are someone from Trivandrum too. Love the spread geography here. Can I reshare the poll? Uh, Dia, can you see if people are filling or else I'll again reshare the poll? Uh, yeah, a lot of people already actually filled it so it's okay for those who can't see the poll please let us know if you're a restaurant owner and which part of india are you from i love it anjana how you have also slipped into the chat introducing yourself Okay, great. I think we'll keep this on. Meanwhile, uh, I'm also going to end the poll in like 10 seconds. So if you haven't filled in, please fill it in. We have Haryana, Bombay, Bangalore, uh, someone from an art cafe, Surat. Wow, uh, Varun from Rotak has a sweet shop from 1949. That's a great, it must be like a fourth generation, third generation right now running it. Great, with this, we're going to end our poll right now. If you want us to share the results with you. Great. Um, Dia, I just need one help right now from you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. I yeah. have you entered from two different monitors because I can see one Shivani here, one Pek Puja, and one Anjana. Um, no, I'm just logged in from my laptop only. That's one device. Uh, and okay, because you're coming from Shivani, and there is another Shivani running here. <laughs> um, let me just check for a second. Yeah, can you please check that? Yeah. Or you can just pin me and uh, Anjana. You guys are pinned on my screen. Both of you are only pinned. Okay, no. So there are basically two monitors who are recording. So can you please log out and log in again? Yes, Anjana. Finally, it's here. Uh, again, a warm welcome to you. Uh, so everyone today, uh, great, please keep putting in everything on the chat, uh, keep it very interactive. Uh, I want to welcome you to our 
uh, I have forgotten the count of which webinar have we hosted, but we ideally host four webinars a month, which are absolutely free of cost. It is by Pink Puja's Foodpreneur community, a community which is very dear to our heart because it the entire idea of this community is to uplift every foodpreneur possible. Anyone who is interested in the industry, anyone who is in the industry or is a consultant or a chef or a supplier, franchisee owner, anything. Everyone is most welcome to this industry always. So with Foodpreneur, we try to host different kinds of webinars uh, and we have a very active WhatsApp group. So if you're not a part of the group, you can always join in there. There is no spamming allowed. So please don't try to spam anyone. All you get is updates about the industry and updates about the new webinars, free webinars that are happening in the industry throughout. Coming back to this, the rules of our Foodpreneur are very simple. We try to host one hour webinar where we have a guest speaker who's an expert expert and is a professional in that particular industry on that particular subject. And today with us, we have Anjana for the same on menu. Uh, I will, of course, talk a little more about Anjana, but let me walk you through how the webinar works. Uh, after the introduction, the stage will be with Anjana for 20, 30 minutes, where she'll be walking you through the entire webinar's um, PPT and talking about the points and her insights. Uh, the Q&A will be followed after that webinar. Please feel free to keep the chat box absolutely active. You can throw in your questions. All these questions will be personally taken up by me later on in the webinar in Q&A. So don't worry about any question being missed out. In case if that also happens, we have a form which is directly going to go to Anjana, where both of you can directly get in touch and discuss with her if there is anything. Great. Uh, I am Shivani. I'm your host today. I head marketing and PR for Pit Puja's team. And more than that, me and Dia, my colleague, we run this foodpreneur community where we try to give back to the foodpreneur or food industry in whatever manner possible. Pit Puja is a restaurant management software which powers more than 50,000 restaurants throughout India. I will not be talking a lot about that because it's not about Pit Puja. This webinar is about food engineering and menu engineering. Today's webinar is strictly going to be in English. So if um, you feel that this is something that is not understandable by you, don't worry, there will be a recording also on our YouTube channel where you can watch it again slowly. But uh, we have had a request since a very long time for an English webinar. And finally, we have a, a webinar speaker who is going to take that. So for all our international clients, it's a great thing, I think. Uh, I've been getting so many requests. So now, coming to our webinar speaker, um, Anjana. Anjana, thank you so much for doing this, of course. Uh, you can always uh, be interactive here too, it's all right. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you for giving me this platform and opportunity. I, well, we are really glad. So I came across Anjana's profile and I saw her work and I was like, wait, she took a great job. Why haven't we got in touch with her? And I slipped into her DMs. And that's how I got in touch. <laughs> Uh, so a little about Anjana. Anjana is a restaurant consultant and a marketer and a food blogger who has been active in the F&B industry since 2017. She has worked as a marketing manager for Uber Eats Kerala, Pumpkin Cart, Toronto, and is an academy member who represents Kerala food for Culinary Culture Co. India's only definitive and authoritative culinary moment and now runs a small food and beverage consultancy. So welcome Anjana to the webinar again. And uh, for those who don't know, she is quite popular on Instagram. She has around 48K followers, uh, very active and is very active in talking about food. She knows her food. She literally runs a campaign called Know Your Food where she talks about different kinds of foods and understanding what food needs to be. So enough of me and over to you, Anjana, because this is your expertise on understanding and designing an easy menu for a restaurant. Thank you so much, Shivani. I couldn't have asked for a better introduction. I mean, first of all, kudos to you guys for, uh, I know how hectic and challenging marketing and PR can get to when, it, when it's for a company like Paypoja, like in that size and, uh, you know, uh, magnitude. And for you guys to manage all of that and with no communication gaps throughout the planning of this uh, uh, webinar, I mean, give it, I give it to you. I mean, I, I won't be able to do this. Like being on the other side, I know how difficult it can get. Thank you so much. I would thank Dia for the same because she is my backbone. She literally takes care of everything back in. Yes, like, she did. She she was a superwoman for uh, throughout this uh, whole conversation. <laughs> so yeah. uh, thank you so much for having me. 
uh, before I jump into the whole uh, slides and everything, that was a lovely introduction. Uh, I would like to give you a, a small heads up that this is as nerve wracking as it can get because this industry is so dynamic. It's so um, it's so varied and it keeps changing. And for a country like India, or if you're from abroad, you know, if you're planning to do Indian cuisine, you know how complicated the layers can be and how complicated um, the calculations and each move should be. So as a consultant, I'm still uh, baby steps in learning as I go. And whatever I, I try to incorporate in the presentation is all the learnings I've acquired from like 2015 since I got into the food and beverage industry, little by little. And I, my learnings have also changed and evolved over time. So I've tried to bring it to a nutshell. So I'm just going to quickly share my screen and tell you guys that if you feel that my uh, what I'm trying to tell you could work differently for you, for your restaurant or your menu, Please, you do you, but this is something that is very subjective also. Certain points, certain key points can work differently for the location that you're in. It can work differently for the kind of uh, uh, public you cater to, a kind of uh, background you mm -hmm. come from. I heard uh, Shivani mentioned someone from 1949. That kind of expertise, I, I'm sure I won't have to be able to you know, run a cafe or a food uh, chain for generations to come so that's kind of some other kind of expertise which I would have loved to have but my parents or my family didn't want to run a business so <laughs> so that's there so I'm just going to quickly share my screen and um, I hope you guys can Anurag uh, am I not audible uh, Shivani can you hear me yeah we can hear us at times that happens uh, with certain sounds so they just okay. need to refresh uh, okay. don't worry so everyone keep putting in uh, a thumbs up if you can see the screen uh, yeah, guys, just to give a heads up, you are audible and your visuals are also clear. So you guys can go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Um, if you guys cannot hear me at any point, please do let me know. Okay. So um, when we decided on the topic, we wanted to work around something regarding menu and making the ultimate restaurant menu. It's a very, um, very challenging topic because first we need to understand uh, what kind of uh, menu we should be curating for the dream project that we have or um, what are we looking forward to uh, when we think of a five-year plan for our restaurant or when we think of where we see our restaurant or our baby food chain in the next come in the coming years right so making the ultimate restaurant menu takes a lot of research takes a lot of time takes a lot of effort and it's not something as simple as figuring out a couple of dishes that you liked or you eat in and then putting it on the menu and trying to make it profitable like I mentioned in the video yesterday there's a lot of hard work and there's a lot of uh, effort that goes behind it so I've tried to incorporate the things that I feel are really um, crucial while uh, making a menu or designing a menu for the dream project that we have or an existing project that we'd like to revamp and renovate um, just give me one second Okay, so first we need to know how important a menu is for us before we jump into what we are going to do with the menu or um, how we're going to design it. We need to understand how crucial a menu is for our establishment before we even make the second step. So baby steps, right? First thing I would definitely say is the fact that I this quote has actually excited me a lot. Um how they say a menu is a real estate and every dish needs to earn its rent on it. It's as crucial as investing in a land uh, for your restaurant, as crucial as uh, taking a space for lease, or you know how much effort we put into uh, figuring out where exactly should our restaurant be placed. Exactly, we should be figuring out how our menu should be placed in the brand or the restaurant because each dish is going to earn you a rent. Each dish is going to earn you a net profit. Each dish is going to contribute to your final net profit. So every dish that you keep, where you keep, which to what next, what uh, where you keep, place it next to the dish makes a lot of difference for you. For example, if you're placing one um, cheap, uh, an affordable dish right next to an expensive one in the menu where do you place it in the menu how do you um, design it makes a lot of difference on how much you earn from it so consider your menu a real estate and make sure that you earn rent from it 
And please do not forget that it's not just a list of items that the restaurant sells or serves, but it's also one of a kind of a marketing tool, right? So when you start a restaurant, it's not only about like spending on influencer marketing or Google ads or um, just putting out flyers or having a grand launch. The ultimate, the most important marketing tool for your restaurant is definitely going to be the menu. Because even if you get people through influencer marketing, let's say we've spent like uh, 50,000 on influencer marketing in the launch month. And we have like a, a footfall of 100 people. And on the first day itself, we see 100 people footfall. Then we, we see 150. But if the menu is not attractive and the menu doesn't please the customer, the return of investment on your uh, marketing actually falls down by the minute, by the day. So after once the influencer marketing hype dies down, there's not an automated marketing happening. That should happen. And that will come only from your menu. So. It's one of the most powerful marketing tools. <clears throat> a well-constructed and designed menu acts as a tool for persuasion and influence. Imagine having customers who come from different parts to just enjoy the food you've had, food you've, uh, you're about to serve. And they're just sitting there, your server tries to, you know, there's a little bit of effort from the service team as well, but there's a lot of effort from the menu that naturally happens. You see a very attractive menu and then you see something very exciting on the menu. It's an automated, like it's that intimation that, oh, I should try this. For example, for someone like me, it, the customer is very subjective. For someone like me, I see something with seafood on the menu, which is a very attractive, which has a very attractive description, which is a very catchy name. And I see something like a spaghetti in a fish moly gravy. I'd be super excited to have it. So it's an automatic, automated persuasion or an influence. So if you design and construct the menu in a very well-mannered way, it's easy to convince the customer. You don't even have to make that additional effort for your service team to like, you know, do you want to try this, sir? Do you want to try this, ma'am? That it goes a long way to act as persuasion and influence. Also, simply saying it's not just a piece of paper. So let's put a lot more effort because it automatically upsell your products. It helps you upsell your products. For example, I will be talking about that further when we go on to the presentation. There's a point where it says, where the eyes of the uh, customer goes first. So where do you need to place the higher profitability, um, the products or dishes that give you the better margin in the menu? So those things are also crucial. So indirectly or directly, it helps you upsell your products. If a customer is a loyal one who's always, always used to come for one particular product that used to be probably popular, but low popularity, low profitability, then maybe if you place the best selling product which a higher profitability on the menu at a certain place you might be able to upsell to that customer and basically persuade him without making an effort to purchase that particular dish so we'll get into that this is one crucial thing i tell all uh, my clients is that definitely a menu should always be self explanatory but there's, a, there's this one step ahead where we go to train our service staff where um, if, if, we get, if we get this, for example, the kitchen team is well equipped. The service team is only trained for SOPs to just serve food. And the customer comes and asks you, okay, I have food allergies. Uh, do you think this is peanuts? And then they go, oh, 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 oh my God, I don't know. Uh, I should go check with the chef. That's a big letdown. If a customer comes and asks you, uh, hey, I'm very confused about the menu because I have no idea about the cuisine that I'm looking at. I'm actually from the north of India and this is South Indian cuisine. I have no idea. And if the service team is not equipped enough to explain every single detail of the menu or give a summary of what the restaurant owns, we lose a customer then and there directly or indirectly. It's just, it's just there. And uh, that could be a potential customer who could add a huge net profit margin to your uh, final uh, revenue. So that little step, we should always go ahead. After curating the menu, we should make sure that we take the time to equip our service staff with all the information about the menu. They should know every little detail about the menu. So that's, uh, that's about the things you should keep in mind about menu. Now, how do we develop a menu? What do we keep in mind while developing a menu? Now that we know that it's so crucial, there are certain steps and certain things that we need to follow, right? Let's see. First is definitely the layout of the space. Now, how does the layout of the space? Okay, when a client comes to me uh, or comes to me and my partner, 
for um, a restaurant space, they have they have an idea or a curated idea. The first thing we ask them is, okay, do you have a space in mind? Is it an existing one or are we developing it from scratch? Now, how does that affect the menu? I'll tell you. If it's an existing location, that is, for example, we are a restaurant owner who dreams of owning a space. We have a uh, we have a contact where they've already run a restaurant or cafe there. Um, there's already an existing uh, space for dining and there's a kitchen already. Now, what all aspects do we look at? What exactly is the layout of the space? How does that space look like? How does the dining space look like? From where does it go to the kitchen? Are we reworking the whole space? Do we have the funds to rework the space to the cuisine we are thinking of or to the menu we, are, we have in mind? What is the seating capacity? What is the layout of the kitchen? Now, how do I, how do I explain this? Okay, layout of the kitchen. If a kitchen is that existing place used to be a Chinese restaurant and we are trying to make an Arabic restaurant there, you need to change the layout of the kitchen because the movement in the kitchen could be completely different for an Arabic style restaurant and a Chinese style restaurant. So we need to add more equipments that would suit the Arabic style grills, barbecues, shower mask pits, right? And the Chinese restaurant might have an open fire for the walk which might not be a very useful thing for the Arabic style cooking. We might even have to have a Yemeni mandi place. So we have to look at the layout before figuring out the menu. If we do not have the funds to completely rework the space, we might have to tweak the menu a little bit. Now, that is what, where, where I say type of establishment it used to be. Um, would it be a cafe? Was it a restaurant? What is, was it a fast casual? Was it a fast food place? Now, was it a KFC that was running there? And are we taking it to be our restaurant? So is it, if it's existing, these are the points that you need to uh, look out look out for. Now, if it's developing, if it's basically you're taking a land, we have a plot of land, you own a plot of land, and then you're trying to build it from scratch. What is the investment that you're ready to, you know, what is your investment in your hand? How much are your allocated funds? How much manpower can you, do you think with that funds you can procure? What's the expense that you can um, keep aside for procuring the manpower? Now, how do I explain that? Um, okay, we have a cafe in mind, but we need a fine dining approach to the cafe. And if the funds, if the funds according to the market rate, you can only allocate, um, let's say hypothetically for like, for example, 12 lakhs for your uh, procurable manpower. Um, then if, for example, if your manpower can only be five people in the kitchen, let's say uh, an executive chef, um, there's no uh, CDP or anything, just two commies, um, one uh, one assistant chef and one cleaner, like say five people. Now, how does that, will that help you in creating a fine dining menu? I would say no, because you need more manpower for the fine dining menu. So it depends on the allocated funds, how much money you have to procure manpower um, that we'll have to tweak the menu accordingly. So we might have to resort to a, a casual dining space rather than a fine dining space. What's the infrastructure there? How are we planning to develop the infrastructure there? Um, do we have enough funds to bring in expensive uh, ovens? Uh, if you're particular, if your chef is particular about, okay, you need such a brand of oven for the breads that we'll be baking. Let's say, for example, Burgia. We need a Burgia, but we don't need an electrical oven. We need a gas oven. So do we have the space to keep that? Do we have the, um, we have, do we have enough funds to allocate for chimney, uh, the oven, um, do we have enough money to spend on the electricity consumption? What is the seating capacity? Do you think baking breads for just 20 people would be an ideal choice? These are the things that you should keep in mind when it comes to layout of the space and creating the menu. Equipments in flow. It's something very similar to what I mentioned earlier. What are the equipments already available in the kitchen if it's existing? Or what are you ready to invest in? So uh, the kind of equipments that can be accommodated, if the kitchen space is really tiny for a lot of equipments, what is the point of creating an elaborate menu where the chef would struggle with figuring out the flow inside the kitchen? We'll also have to understand how the flow works, right? If there's a salad section, there's a guard manger, then there is a main course area. Then there's, if, if it's a multi-cuisine restaurant, for example, there should be a space for the oriental food to go out uh, there should be a space for middle eastern cu uh, flo uh, cuisine to go out so we have to figure out the flow of the kitchen flow within the kitchen and if it's possible to accommodate so many cuisines within the given space it'll always come from kitchen to service to cleaning 
then back to kitchen again. So we need to figure out if there's a flow in between where the kitchen is placed and the service team is coming out for to the dining area. So if the, if the flow can work from kitchen, the product is going out, it goes to the service team, at the back of the house to the front of the house, and then it again goes to the back of the house that is for cleaning and then goes to back of the house kitchen and then comes back to front of the house. If this flow works out perfectly, the kind of menu that you develop, if that also aligns with the flow, then you're good to go. So that's how much layout of the space works on uh, aids in developing a menu. The menu, um, are there any doubts? Have I checked the chat one second? Okay, cool, cool, awesome, okay. So the type of establishment also uh, works with how much we uh, know about a menu, right? So if you're designing a cafe and then you bring in an elaborate fine dine menu, when your customer comes in, they're so confused because they see a cafe and then they look at the menu, it's, it doesn't go along with it at all. You see a food truck and then you see, how do you, okay, in a food truck, what, what does everyone expect? Quick eats, you go there, you order, you stand in line, then you get a food. So mostly munchies, something that you can grab onto your hand. And then imagine in a food truck, you've curated a menu that is so premium. And then you have to give it pre-plated. And then we don't know where, to, there's no dining space. So you just stand with that pre-plated expensive crockery that will chip off in two days, probably because of how much we handle it in our hand. And then this comes from Thailand or uh, we get it from China. And then you can't get an extra, extra set of crockery after two days because it takes forever to come imported from abroad. It's a mess. Then you have to rework the whole menu. So make sure the kind of establishment has a direct link to the menu to be developed. Depending on the kind of establishment, you need to work out the items, the pricing, the number of items. Number of items is very crucial. A food truck might have a very small kitchen and very probably it can accommodate two chefs and one assistant. Right now, if you bring in 40 to 50 dishes in that little space, unless and until it's well curated, more like a subway sandwich where you can just layer things up, it's going to be a mess in the kitchen when a lot of orders come pouring in. Always think of when the footfall is higher, how do we manage the kitchen side? So depending on the type of establishment, the components, the items, the number of items and the design should be curated. It also depends on whether it is indoor or outdoor because then where would we place the kitchen? Where is the kitchen place? Is it uh, according to the standards, hygiene standards? If it's outdoor, it's an open event. Okay, open cooking. Definitely. Uh, is the chef following all the protocols? What is the kitchen layout going to be? How is the flow going to be? So depending on that also, we have to tweak the menu. This is the most, I think, what everyone wanted to talk, or talk about or discuss about is food cost. And mostly I see that the first two points are neglected and my clients usually dive right into food cost. But what we do is we sit them down and it's like, okay, let's take it step by step. We need to work out the layout. We need to try to work out the type of establishment. Please give us a better idea of what exactly you want. Then we'll work out the food cost. Now, once we decide the layout and the type of establishment, we have a better idea of what exactly, what kind of menu should be created. Depending on that, we work out the food cost. Now, when I talk about food cost, I want to talk about some generic stuff as well. When we think of food cost, okay, let's say, um, let's say naan. We think of uh, uh, garlic naan and we think of food cost as, okay, there's flour, okay, there is uh, uh, some salt, okay, there's, uh, there's a heat cost, everything. But then when, um, when we think of food cost, you should not only think of the cost of ingredients, but also the cost of procurement. Let's say we bring in a very, uh, a fusion menu, which is a North Indian and a South Indian fusion menu to your restaurant. Because maybe, okay, you uh, resonate with the idea of uh, unity or maybe you're half North Indian and half South Indian. You, bring out, you probably wanted to bring out the flavors of your family or your what you've grew, grown up with. So I am someone like that. So let me say if I want to bring in a, a chapati roll, but chapati is stuffed with something like a chicken uh, from South India, like a chicken toren or a, a chicken peretta roll. Now, if I'm starting this restaurant in North India, I'll have to procure certain ingredients from South India to bring the authentic flavors to the kitchen. The cost of procurement also comes in food cost. Now, finding vendors for the same. How much time does it take for it to reach from South to North? So the transportation cost can also come in the food cost. Are there any alternatives for the same ingredient that is available in the North of India that we can 
tweak it to so that our food cost comes down. So it's not just the raw materials converted into edible art, but it's also about how the raw materials reach your kitchen and that it can, can gets converted into edible art. Ideally, food cost would come to 28 to 30 percent of selling price. And that's what consultants tell you also all the time. We try to keep it to 28 to 30 percentage. Please try to keep it to 28 to 30 percentage. The clients might have loads of ideas. They were like, hey, listen, I want Chandika work on this. I really need uh, this on that. But let's say, what if that goes to 50 percent of your food cost? How are you? Go how are we going to break even as soon as possible? But having said that, a few items that are higher in cost can actually help. For example, if a few, most of your products, your most popular items are all 28 to 30 percent food cost. But there's one thing, for example, a Wagyu steak that can go for 50 percent of food cost, right? But that could bring you a higher net profit margin. You just have to place it very conveniently in the menu that it catches attention. Your sales team, your service team just upsells the product and they're like, this is exclusively launched recently or they use their way of words to convince. That one product, even though it can have a 50% food cost, in, when you take your accounts in the end, a higher net profit margin can be added because of this product. So try to keep most of your products within the 25 to 30% range. One of few items, it can be your USP, can go up to 50%. It's okay. One crucial thing is to make ingredients very versatile to cut down on individual portion costs. So one ingredient for one dish. Okay, crazy. Now, how do we make use of that ingredient in other dishes as well? For example, we are trying to import a shrimp paste to add to our Thai food. Now that we have only one Thai uh, dish on the menu and that shrimp paste goes only into that Thai noodle. For example, a part Thai. You know what? If the part Thai doesn't, uh, if people don't order part Thai so much, that shrimp paste is going to go out of expiry and you're going to lose a lot of money on that. Because it's, first of all, it's an expensive product. It's going to be imported as well. So if a particular dish makes use of an expensive ingredient, try to incorporate other dishes that make use of the same ingredient to keep it versatile. Now, how do we use the shrimp paste in another soup or another dish that could make, that doesn't, so it doesn't go waste. Even if a part thai doesn't get ordered, the shrimp paste gets used for another thing as well. If there's a rice noodle for a dish, let's make use of that rice noodle in maybe a salad or a starter as well. Even just like take the rice noodle, deep fry it, add it, crush it, add it to your salad. Make use of it one way or another so that you can cut down on individual portion costs. Food costs, I'm rushing it through now. Okay, so mm -hmm. menu pricing. Food costs, whatever food cost you have, plus your labor, additional overheads and value for money should be your menu pricing. Even though you might have something uh, an ingredient that is super expensive on the dish, if you're not um, giving value for money to your customers, they're not going to come back. Even if the dish, the dish might be absolutely phenomenal, but the with inflation on top of our heads and with the amount of money all of us make, very, be very careful and strategize your menu pricing. It can vary on the type of establishment also. For example, if you're paying a heavy rent at a very premium location, and you have a brand value associated with a very celebrity chef who's probably part of the menu or anything. With brand value, you can increase your menu pricing. With the type of area you've set up the restaurant, you can increase the menu pricing. For example, if you're putting it in South Delhi or South Bombay, that kind of pricing justifies. But if you're if you're planning to put a restaurant in where I am from, like Trivandrum, and you place it like at the, at the rate of South Delhi, people might not just show up. They will be like, it's a very nice place. I might go when I become rich. So... That kind of aspiration is great, but we need customers on a daily basis to run, to be rich. So that that's how your menu pricing should be. It should be a value for money, but should cover your food cost as well. In line with competitors, no matter how fancy your dish could be, it could be Instagrammable, it could be the talk of the town. If the selling price does not stay in line with your competitors, the entire pricing strategy will have to be reworked. That is, if uh, the same dish gets served in a cafe nearby for 400 and we are selling it for 800, that's almost double the price. Even if you bring in a fancy china to serve it in, people are definitely going to go for the same experience in another cafe for the kind of price they offer. So these two things, please keep in mind for menu pricing. Menu engineering is something, it can't be contained in one slide. There's a lot to talk about, but this is an interesting point I wanted to talk to you guys about. If you are a restaurant owner, please do your popularity to profit analysis at quarters or every interval. 
you fix a period for yourself you once once you create a menu it's not done and dusted it's an ongoing process we have to keep working on the menu you have to be an active part of your restaurant all the time or have someone assigned to be part of the act be active in the restaurant if you are someone who owns other businesses as well then let, let there be a general manager who takes care of this let there be someone who's responsible at the top management who takes care of this it's an ongoing process now categorize your dishes into four stars flow houses puzzles and dogs i'm going to share this uh, deck with uh, shivani if anyone wants the deck please feel free to use this um, you can so oh, perfect someone perfect. is not a part of it just message me so i'll send you the link a oh, perfect because this if you might not remember it later but if you want to keep it as a reference so stars flow houses puzzles and dogs if you're confused i'll tell you take out your menu sit at every interval and figure out what are the stars what are the celebrities in your menu high popularity high profitability this dish goes out every day people come in again for it and gives you a high profit margin okay great keep it retain it don't do anything let it stay there now what are flow horses so make combos okay so high popularity by low profitability it's very popular among uh, okay maybe a college going crowd comes to order this but it brings you very little profit now how do we maximize this we don't want to take it off the menu because people love it obviously we don't want to upset them now the solution is you make combos with high profitability dishes for example okay this is a salad that is very popular among the crowd okay maybe i'm giving you an example of a caesar salad that usually people come in and order just when they come and chill but it doesn't bring you any profitability now how do we make a combo with it if you order a caesar salad just order it with the main course that has high profitability and get a discount on it they make the discount make sure that the discount doesn't go overboard with your uh, pricing so that you get enough profit as well or you can make it a combo with a beverage so that the margin also changes like bring your caesar salad bring in a good uh, beverage make a combo out of it for example a starter if you have uh, chicken wings that goes out every time high popularity low profitability add a chicken wing plus a noodle as a main course so it goes out as a combo give an attractive price to that that's how you work it out for the high popularity low profitability one now you segregated that now what are the puzzles in your menu it's high profitability but people don't seem to order it at all like it's a if you if you sell five of them a day you're making good money but people if you unless you persuade or unless you highlight it no one's ordering it it's not at all popular in the restaurant how do we bring it out make it a chef special for the day or add it as a today special create a um a, or one fest for it for example if a particular dish like partha is highly profitable but low pop low popular create a thai huge thai fest for a week market it extensively let people come indirectly give it to them and once they like it they might order it again or reinvent and revamp the dish keep the crux of the dish just like that make it more instagramable add some elements which make might make it more popular um or figure out why it's not popular ask your customers okay uh, why would you like to order uh, part thai it's a chef special for the day and probably just check with them okay um, why would they not maybe in a feedback form and get the information and try to work around it we invent and revamp the menu so that it doesn't have to go away we just have to fix that puzzle we just have to solve that puzzle now the last one is definitely dogs i have no idea why they're called dogs it's a european i concept i love dogs it's low popularity low profitability they it's not popular it's not going to make you any money just remove it from the menu take it out scratch it off there's no point in having it you're only going to uh, add an expense to your uh, uh, inventory list is just going to keep on coming in inventory and just get gets thrown out there's no point this is this one aspect of menu engineer there's so much more to talk about just wanted to keep it short categorize into groups i i mean into courses depending on uh, the kind of establishment you have soup salad on tray desserts make sure that you have a good you know the categories are well established in your menu itself categorize into the specials fast moving use icons to say that okay this is your best selling product or this is spicy if someone's looking for a spicy product if they can see it's spicy great uh, highlight unique dishes maybe put a box and say that this is a unique dish probably this is only available in that area in your restaurant sell it indirectly sell it without even putting effort into uh, spending money with influencers you can just highlight it in your menu and market it to your existing customers 
and retain a balance in the menu. It should not be all specials. There should be some classics to cater to the crowd that do not know about what to order. There should be certain uh, items in the menu that are cheap and affordable for people who come in. No one should go empty handed once they come into your restaurant. That could be one concept that you can keep in your mind. Oops. Then comes, okay, after menu engineering, definitely menu design. Once you have all of this laid out, work with your designer, your chef, everyone to design your menu. That goes a long way. I can't stress this enough. You go to a fancy restaurant and then you see some pieces of paper printed. It's a bummer. That's a huge letdown. Please take enough um, effort to work on the layout of the menu. That is the brand that you have should be highlighted on the menu. The brand colors of the restaurant should be should resonate with the menu as well. The theme, the colors, the font and the design. Um, the dish and the concept of the brand. For example, if your whole cafe is very pink and vibrant and it's very lovey-dovey and then you suddenly have a um, very coffee shop like menu, it doesn't go along with it, right? You should have a very, it should basically be a mirror of your restaurant. It should mirror uh, what brand you've developed. Make it stand out. You special, use special areas, designs to highlight profitable, fast-moving dishes. You don't have to tell them it's profitable. Whatever is profitable to you, make it bold or say that it's the most best-selling item or uh, add images of those dishes to attract customers. Maybe you can just say that, okay, this is the picture. Like, okay, 16th item, this is the image. It's not a book, but a chapter. Keep it short and do not crowd the, crowd the menu. It should not be like a 16-page menu where people have to go, oh my God, I can't order. And then you ask the service staff and the service staff also has no idea. They're just going to go. They're just going to leave the place. The placement. Okay, this is a tip. I think most of the consultants will tell you or if anyone who studied food and beverage management would tell you that the center and the top right corners are your friends. Basically, the first thing you look at when you look at a menu is you go to the center. Okay, whatever you see in the center and then you look at the top right corner, then you go like this. It's like a pattern that people, this is a, it, it's basically proven, but there are people who do it differently also will start from left. There are people who might start from right, but mostly it's center and top right corners. Place the high profitable fast moving dishes at these places. Like keep it in the center or keep it on the top right corner. This along with keeping a high profitable dish below an expensive dish, could increase the chances of profitable dish to be chosen. For example, a leg of lamb, a ran, is expensive. And then you keep a chicken kurma, which is probably a highly profitable dish. It's not expensive. So they might like, okay, this is okay, 800, 200. I'll just go for chicken kurma and two chapatis. But profit is definitely in your pocket. So placement like that also goes a long way. It should never be give the list of the items with the cost in an Excel sheet to your designer. Sit with them, talk to them about where you want to place these dishes as well. And like I said earlier, descriptions and images. Entice your customers to place an order. And add simple descriptions. Like you've seen how idli and vada are described in certain restaurants. It just makes it more complicated. Just dosa as a thin crepe batter. Make it simple. Okay, they, dosa is a South Indian delicacy that probably warms your heart or something like that. Just keep it very simple. Keep it very enticing. Persuade them to order. and Please, this is a request. Do not add stock images unless you're like you're forced to. Like, the chef is doing so much. The chef takes so much effort to create that art. Let's do justice to that. It doesn't go, it doesn't harm you to have a photography team click good pictures for your brand, put it up on your website, put it up on your menu so that what the customer sees is exactly what they get. You go to a cafe and then you see a uh, burger from uh, Europe or UK that's been taken, clicked and put it onto your menu. And then you get something very different when you when it comes out of the kitchen. That brings in negative reviews. And I'm sure if you guys have attended the previous session about negative reviews, how it impacts your uh, restaurant. So make sure to like add high quality images of your own product. Keep it fresh and uncluttered. Definitely, it should it should not look like you're writing uh an, you're writing your note from in your class. It should be more like with space, and please consider people with visual uh, difficulty impairment. They have to also access your menu. So I would suggest that if you could put it in braille, that will be great. Uh, but that's a that's that's inclusivity that we can talk about later. But if you could uh, bring in a uniqueness to the menu, it should something a concept that no one has used before or uh, bring in an idea of like a maybe uh, QR code menus are very popular these days. And uh, I'm sure if you are, uh, if you're already with Paid Puja, they, they already design your menu as well for uh, um, and a digital menu. I think I've used it for one of my clients as well. 
the QR code because we had no idea how to do it. And you guys had designed it for us. So spacing and usage of good font size. And if you are, if you're someone who is not uh, comfortable with creating a physical menu, let's do a digital menu. But the digital menu can also be very attractive. It can come in different shapes, sizes. The movement of it can look like a book. So there also, if you put a little bit of extra effort, that adds brownie points to your brand. Ah, okay. Food allergens. If you're running a restaurant and if you're the management, if you're on the top management, please learn about the food allergens, its effects and how to deal with the situations involving them. You might not know, maybe a person has peanut allergy, the peanut butter spoon was not cleaned properly. These are things that can affect your reputation heavily. So consult with your chef to ensure that proper hazard analysis, critical control points, that's how the kitchen runs for temperature control, what's put where, how do you source your meat, where do you store your meat, all of this. All the protocols are in place. Just because if you're investing money, this is one advice the restaurant owners in Trivandrum have given me that if you're starting a restaurant, no matter what other job you might have, ensure that even if, one onion gets out of the kitchen, you have a counterfeit. You know it and you make sure you always have an idea of what's going on in your establishment. You can't just blame it on the chef or the person later. It's you make sure you're accountable for you are accountable for it at the end of the day. You are answerable. So know your food allergens. There's a lot of information available on the internet. You can take courses on it, uh, figure out because that it's not just peanuts or almonds and uh, uh, shellfish. There's more to it. So if if and it can be fatal as well. So you need to be very, very careful with the allergens. And ensure that if there are allergens, any allergens used in the kitchen, it's clearly indicated on the menu using text or design. You can use uh, just highlight, make it red, bold, or add a design to say that, okay, these are allergens. Or you can add a, uh, you can keep a constant uh, board in the restaurant that says these are the dishes that have allergens. Train your staff as well about what if a consumer comes, hey, I'm lactose intolerant. Do you think this has dairy? And the service staff goes, no. But then it does have, it's going to look, it's going to create a chaos. So make sure your service staff is also equipped. And the first thing to train anybody in the restaurant industry is if you do not know something, please say you do not know. It's okay to say you do not know. Do not try to cover up and say no, and then later repent on it. So let's just say whatever we do not know about. The last, I wanted to incorporate everything into one slide. So trends versus fads. Trends stay over time, fads fail. So focus on trends and work on the menu accordingly. Fads can be used as intermittent marketing tools. This is something I tell my clients as well. It need not be so some people say, hey, this, is, this trend is going to go away soon. So let's not look into it. We can, we can actually make use of it as well. Now, what are trends? Some examples would be veganism slowly evolved, but it, it stayed. It's, it has stayed with us. It stayed with humanity. So they come in very slowly. Initially, you might think that it's not going to make it big, but eventually it will take a huge space in the market. And by then you would have lost the first mover advantage. So analyze the market, identify the trends that work for your establishment or location or type of menu. Um, if there, you see that no one has a monopoly over vegan food here, incorporate some vegan dishes into your menu and market it heavily. And you might see a lot more demographic of customers come into your uh, establishment as well. Now, just because I wanted to give you an idea of latest trends of 23, and if there's anybody who wanted to work around it, a couple of them are sustainability, of course. A lot of people are going into eco-friendly, sustainable products. So less of plastic, sustainable produce in your restaurant, locally produced. Think global, but you can definitely act local. A lot of brands like Bombay Canteen, Opedro, Indian Accent, they're all going sustainable and they're going for locally produced food. World's top restaurants, Michelin restaurants have all gone sustainable already. They're all locally produced. One, Haoma in Bangkok, Gagan, all of them are locally produced food. If you want to add Instagrammable food to your menu, please go ahead. Curating immersive dining experience is something that can see a huge blow up in 23. For example, the visual media brought into food or creating the whole restaurant in a vibe of a movie, uh, a, a cafe, a cine cafe or things like that, where you're not just coming for the food, but also coming for the experience you offer. So curating dining experiences, definitely. And plant proteins. Uh, going plant-based is something we've seen already in 2021 to 2023, but plant proteins can see a spike in 23 is what we predict. Now, fads, they come with a bang in ghost humanity. So they just come and then they're gone. So you don't see them. But when they are here, let's make use of them, right? They can be used to our benefit by incorporating them the way they are. Or you can tweak them to 
be part of your menu it can be a great marketing tool for example monster shakes i don't know if anyone remembers monster shakes they were a huge thing back then they were everywhere you seeing them at least in south of india it was like crazy they came and a lot of restaurants made use of it they added monster shakes to their menu to just market it over time once that went now there are no uh, no more monster shake but the brand is already popular among people so they go back for other dishes so let's not just completely ignore fads as well let's try to incorporate them for seasonal marketing ha huh. okay and that's it i uh, own a small restaurant consultancy here in kerala and if you'd like if you want to own a dreaming a business or if you think of revamping we can be your brand's mixologist thank you we are from the brunch lab and thank you so much pet puja for this opportunity thank you my eyes was completely on that ppt i am so going forward and i'm going to go back and read that ppt again especially the differentiation of so many things on the menu that you have given uh with pet puja we come across so many people right uh one thing that i am also very uh, nosy about is menu uh there are days when i like a small menu that give me five things but those five things better be mind blowing or there can be a mixed cuisine menu that give me beverages and desserts separately and mains separately like don't yeah. put like, there are like so many things with people i think uh so with this we are going to open i think someone's on unmute Yeah. So with this, we are going to open the entire floor for uh, the people to ask anything that you want. You can put in the questions. There are already a couple of questions that I have written down. Uh, this wouldn't take more time because honestly, Anjana, I think you've covered a lot of things, a lot of questions that I also had. Uh, I think most of the questions are going to be on outlet types. So one question uh, that people had was if you can give. certain examples of outlet wise to the kind of menu dish number of dishes people should keep yes you told about or talked about the layouting that you know the kitchen in a certain way moves there are going to be a lot of things uh, by the sitting like if you only have 10 people sitting there should be a different kind of menu ideally but for let's say a cloud kitchen or let's say uh, a fine dine or a bakery how many number of dishes do you recommend your clients particularly that they should at least have these many to understand the first six months of their business got it so here i would say it depends on the location where you start if it's a predominantly vegetarian area predominantly non vegetarian area so you have to be very mindful of what kind of what kind of customers you expect right for example i'll give you an example of where i am from it's uh, even though i'm from kerala which is like a he heavily north veg north like non vegetarian state but where i am from in trivandrum we have a lot of vegetarian uh, population as well so if i'm starting a small cafe i'll have to be mindful of having in a good balance of vegetarian as well as non vegetarian dishes so if a vegetarian customer comes in and they see that they only have one option like a paneer on the menu they're going to be heavily disappointed we need to cater to that crowd also and they might come in with a family of like 6 to 7 people so we're losing 7 people at the same time so if you can keep like the starters to mostly four or five which can include uh, two kinds of meat and uh, one vegetarian dish and then a main course to let's say um, depend so this also again depends on the kind of kitchen layout you have the number of staff you have what are the, uh, the the dish on the menu is it going to have a lot of pre production is it need does it need to be frozen in the morning like in the morning huddle when the chefs come in uh, um, we are having a huddle and we say okay let's let's start prepping this this uh, all these sauces are going to go for 3 days into the freezer cool awesome now 3 days done we have to start making this from scratch again and we have almost like 20 dishes on the menu with a seating capacity of 10 people most of things are going to go out so these things are interconnected to say hard and fast number that i'm going to start a small cafe how many items should be on the menu is completely it doesn't make sense to me to say yeah. it like that. but i would say to start off keep it to maximum of 18 to 20 dishes that's it if you have very less manpower and that includes your soup salad starter everything uh, and depends on the kind of establishment also so it it it's good to do research um, and look at your competitors and how they're doing it maybe re replicate it with your own menu and then after 6 months analyzing the market change it again makes complete sense i think absolutely makes sense a lot of things or trends that are seen in uh... in gujarat or in andhra pradesh place where i am from is uh people who have opened a cafe they don't hire bakery or dessert chefs 
they outsource that particular thing from the local bakeries and right. make them for them because that's smart. That Very. they don't have to spend a lot of money or hire a person for that. They already have existing people who they tie up with and make exclusive contact that you will only serve this to my restaurant. And I have this kind of menu. And according to this menu, these are three things that I want. Absolutely. It makes so much sense that, you know, you are not now hiding a new person for that. And your menu actually becomes inclusive. That you know, not just give spicy, savory things, but also a mix of sweet. Absolutely. I, I, actually, I just wanted to add that even brands like Burger King, uh, Wendy's have started doing this with their bakery products. Wherever they are, they try to uh, bring in locally produced bakeries. For example, if they're in Australia and if their bakery menu is completely different, they just procure it from the local menu because it tastes much better. It's taken every day and can be taken at a wholesale rate and supports local players also. So it's, 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 it's a beautiful concept. Everyone who's been asking uh, who need who want to get in touch with Anjana, Dia from my team is going to send a link where you can directly fill a form and Anjana will get all the details and you will also get her details and you will be getting in touch with her. Don't worry, it will be absolutely easy to get in touch with her. So there yes. is one question about Anjana food pricing. Now food pricing, you talked about uh, food cost. Uh, but besides food cost, there are multiple costs that need to be taken care of. Or what is a profitable profit margin that you should keep in your menu? Can you give us an idea about it? It should be like 20%, 50%, online should be this much, offline should be this much. If you have any idea on that pricing of a menu. So uh, I'll be very honest here. Uh, in, in the restaurant consultancy that I run, I am the hospitality side of things. I usually take care of all the designing, engineering, menu engineering stuff. The numbers guy is my partner who is a CA. So we, maybe if you could get in touch with me, I could give you a better perspective from my partner's side because I don't want to give you half-baked information. Uh, he'll give you, he'll be able to give them a better idea of the breakdown of how exactly, how sales projection should be done. So these are things we actually do in, in consultation as well. So basically it's a numbers game along with hospitality. So that's how the consultancy works also. He takes care of the sales projection, the costing, the, and they, he educates the client with all of that information. So they're equipped to start a restaurant. So maybe if we could reach out to me, I can give you a better information from the CA perspective of things rather than me telling you. No, this actually kind of makes absolute sense because they know finance. They will actually break down the entire thing for you. Yeah. Um, uh, Jaydeep has a question. He put this across a lot of times. Have okay. you come across a case where the menu prices have been reduced and has had a positive impact? I honestly, Jaydeep, have never seen that. So I think, Anjana, if you have seen that and what is the impact of that? I have definitely because I come from a very price sensitive market. And okay. I, I hail from a very price sensitive market. It's mostly Trivandrum is a tier three city and we've just grown into this slowly developing. We got our McD probably last to last year. So uh, here that has worked a lot. Um, there was a restaurant that started off uh, with uh, a lot of items on their menu and it was very expensive. So people started like the footfall started falling after the initial marketing hype. So they slowly started reducing the menu prices and uh, they, they controlled on the portion uh, quantity as well. They were giving elaborate quantity of food for that price. So it was actually value for money, but then there were a set of customers who would have been loyal if the money would have come down. So they reduced the prices and they did another marketing event for talking about making it affordable to you. And that worked in favor of them. There are four restaurants now. Okay, wow. Well, that actually kind of makes sense because for... Yeah. Uh, smaller tier two tier three place a lot of people are price sensitive and especially Absolutely. i think people in the corporate regions where Absolutely. there's a there where there are offices i think exactly. everyday meals they become they are not affordable if i'm spending 300 400 rupees every day for a meal exactly exactly so that also changes if you're curating an experience if the yeah. restaurant is a complete experience you might not have to do it you might have to just work on bringing out high popular dishes uh, highly popular dishes that bring you high profitability. You might have to just add those into the menu to balance off the rest. So I you can work one on. point that stuck to me, what you told was your people need to know your menu. Yes. I get so angry when uh, recently, like I am like a couple of my friends are allergic to uh, uh, nuts and cashews and everything. And they 
every dish we had to ask them if that's okay because they didn't know anything then ultimately the chef had to come out and it was a very popular restaurant and we yeah. were disappointed that how could you not know this like what if it's fatal what if something happens so i think if people know your menu that's important and you need to educate them again and again absolutely so one question gotham had is very interesting uh, so it is regarding the plant protein what are your thoughts on promoting plant proteins as mock meats or renaming them as unchicken unmutton or just sticking to the name what is your opinion how should be they named in a menu mm, okay here's two perspectives personal and business okay now uh, personally i'm not a fan uh, i'm more of a fan of culturally vegan dishes um i am someone who believes that indian cuisine has a lot of vegan dishes to start from and we just overlook them you just have to go into research and find out uh, for if you come to kerala i can tell you there there's a person from finland who lives here in trivandrum uh, who's migrated because she's vegan and she finds naturally vegan products she doesn't use any of the plant based or anything it is whatever she eats dosa with oil instead of uh, ghee um all the desserts that we have here if you remove ghee from it it's all naturally vegan uh, rice and uh, dal without ghee because we use oil everything is vegan uh, so naturally so personal point of view i would say that you can just work out vegan dishes from the indian cuisine menu itself from a business point of view that might not work because there are people who probably want to experience that kind of food being vegan staying vegan like a vegan chicken or a, using oyster mushrooms instead of uh so i believe that okay from a business perspective whatever works for you uh but uh, if you say if you're using something that's not chicken let's just name it something unique like a vegan zinger burger and just mention that we're using oyster mushroom burger oyster mushroom a deep fried oyster mushroom patties with a um, herb aioli or whatever and just explain make the description like that let's not work around uh, naming them something new like call it uh, a vegan chicken or a vegan mutton just call name something unique that makes it your own yeah i believe yes, that yeah and because you have to work around those two kinds of uh, people also who hate it i think you should also not confuse your audience because yes. they, they will get so confused and they'll start losing interest that oh, what should i order now it doesn't make sense Uh, so abhishek uh, has a question on cloud kitchen of course it's a little digressing but we'll try to make some point around it uh, okay. i'm planning to start a cloud kitchen and felt and feel that marketing about the cloud kitchen and the dish through instagram or through other social media channels is really hard we know about it uh, how should i get followers and the first few customers and is it mandatory to have a website as well i'll take the website part later but anjana why don't you take the previous part absolutely i can repeat the question just give me one second okay there is a cloud kitchen okay uh, if abhijit if you're looking for reference uh, there's a cloud kitchen uh, from trivandrum called khao and uh, it's owned by so they have three different cloud kitchens in one space it's called chili pepper kitchen if you want to look it up uh, chili pepper kitchen under them they have three kinds of cuisines samurai hanzos for uh, chinese and indo chinese and everything khao for north indian kappa stories for south indian they have done a phenomenal job in marketing so they have brought in influencers they have brought in celebrities and they have delivered the food to them and put a reel on instagram that's as simple as it is right try to get your contacts and put it out it need not be a kitchen or a space or a dining space to be marketed cloud kitchen that goes kitchens to uh, i think fasos um um there are so many uh, rebel foods have a lot of uh, cloud kitchen 17 18 brands and brand. they are famous so yeah. um that can easily be done it's not cloud kitchen as such is not a let down for marketing it's just that how you do it how you put it up it's all about the final product that entices people it's not about where you're located some if, unless it's dine in it's not about where you're located and as long as you're registered as the cloud kitchen and you have the fssai food aggregators are your way to go forward so mato spigi if you have a local player there pay them a little extra or tell them okay you can work around this commission so that they boost you you can always talk to your partner manager uh, or your sales accountant team in your food aggregator business just tell them that okay you are ready to give discounts you are ready to take the burn of it please put me on the banner or just let's do a 50% off weekend for exclusively your brand 
and these are things the food aggregators are dying to hear from their uh, sales team and the sales person it's a boost for them he gets a bonus also he or she or they they get a bonus as well so try to talk to your register yourself with zomato and swiggy try to talk to them run an exclusive offer only on them try to ask them to put you on the banner put you bring it to you bring you on top so your visibility increases as well and uh, so yeah, i think uh and 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 like exactly like you're saying couple of our previous webinars abhijit were actually covering about understanding marketing and sales for cloud kitchen and understanding the matter wow. so what happens is also abhijit because i also got to know i don't run a restaurant but after knowing so much we know how the restaurant industry works uh, a website it's not mandatory initially trust me it's not but eventually when you get popular what lapinos and everyone else also did was now they have made their own app they have made their own websites so they don't have to pay that 30% commission to these aggregators in the end now what happens is you can actually give those amount of discounts to your consumers and bring a bogo offer on your website so with paypush what started happening was this we saw this spike entirely because with the existing software we made the website for 5000 rupees that's it where your menu upi everything is sorted and then people started running exclusive offers over there because it became cheaper for them to give more money to that delivery agent that you deliver my food because they are already there cut down on that 30% commission after a point on zomato swiggy and make their own retaining customers so abhijit i think you should definitely also watch that webinar and exactly what your, what uh, anjana is saying that you it's not difficult but you'll have to like be creative around the entire marketing in this uh, so we are going to take last two three questions right now anjana because uh, like we always have a hard stop at 1 hour uh but of course the topic was so enticing that a lot of people had a lot of questions around it but before that if you want to reach out to anjana or petrija's team or anyone or uh, this is a direct link you can just fill in the form or give us a feedback anything that is there and everyone will reach out to you asap in a day or two max and if you're not a part of the web, uh, webinar community uh dia can you also send the link of the uh, whatsapp group so you can join in over there so uh there were a couple of questions on i think someone sent in a question on a lot of restaurant who have bulk sales which has low margins like shawarma to cover their restaurant cost is it suggested that all restaurants have same thing uh which will sell more in quantity and have the less margin because there is a lot of footfall so is it exactly that Yeah, as i said the question is on low margin items low cost items but have a have a more popularity in sales in sales yeah so that's just that uh, high popularity and uh, no profitability ones yeah so these are the ones uh, i had mentioned in the uh, webinar as well so if you think that that particular item runs for that location that you're in uh, definitely uh work around it let's let's have it on the menu and like i mentioned start adding combos maybe give a buy two get one free offer or uh, maybe run a week of shawarma and mojito combos or maybe do uh, take the same shawarma make it unique make a shawarma burger or uh, make a shawarma sandwich make a shawarma pizza like bring out all kinds of crazy stuff on your menu to just bring the brand out right if and if, but let me tell you if your concept of the menu does not align with a shawarma at all then try to tweak the whole concept of shawarma and make it approachable with the menu you have for example you have a casual dine in space that does not serve arabic food at all then please don't bring in a shawarma there because it it just tries that it looks like you're trying too hard and that you failed so let's not give out that image maybe you can level it up and add it as a grilled rotisserie chicken uh, leg and uh, thigh with a reduced gravy or a thum or a hummus or a maybe like a dip platter with shawarma uh, meat and like a side pita bread okay let, let me give you an idea let's think of uh, take pita bread cut it into uh, uh, pieces uh, toast it in the oven make it like a shawarma nachos with hummus in ta tahina and uh, thum you can pay me that for later pay me for <laughs> yeah i will, i I'm, i'm just feeling hungry thinking about that because that is something i would definitely eat yeah so think of maybe leveling up the dish so that uh, you know it appeals to your customers at the same time it still holds the quality of i mean essence of a shawarma but you're not uh, we are not going down to just bring customers we're not leveling down let's always think of taking a step further with every action we make 
or take no makes absolute sense so last two questions that we'll be taking from you if you have any great ones just put it in i will try to take it uh, so um, pra pranan has a question minimum people required in the kitchen to have 15 dishes now depending on the type of dish yeah type of dish type of menu that you're planning to serve exactly if you're thinking of making everything from scratch in the 15 dish if you're thinking of uh, doing everything from scratch like imagine you have 15 pasta dishes in the menu and the 15 pasta dishes are different pastas there's ravioli there's fettuccine there's spaghetti there's uh, linguine all sorts so the chef has to make everything from scratch he has to make all the sauces from scratch if it's a, is it a fusion menu is it a classic pasta menu are you procuring the pasta from the supermarket are you making pesto fresh every day do you have a lot of non vegetarian dishes do you have duck in the menu do you have to debone it so minimum people okay if from in a very generic point of view 15 dishes you need one execute you can call him an executive chef depends on the type of establishment for 15 dishes uh if it's a small cafe like space you need one uh, you can just take a sous chef and make him an executive chef so one sous chef you will need one commie um and um, you will probably need two cleaners four to four to five staff that that should be okay makes sense makes sense if there is a small menu i think for a bigger one then you would need uh, quite a lot more Uh, so uh, one question is quite interesting. How many options should we give to a customer for a particular dish so that they don't get confused and can choose easily? It's a very thin line. It's a very thin line to tweak the rest, tweak the menu. To you, we are are we are we planning to open a like a, a hotel's restaurant, like for example an ITC or an Obroy. That they run a restaurant. Their service is supreme. because you pay that kind of hefty amount but you paying so much for a dish that you expect so much in return like even if consider it consider it like a availing a room service you're paying so much for the kind of amenities and services they can provide you you're paying 12000 rupees or 18000 rupees for a room in grand hyatt because because even if you ask for a bed extra bed it's not going to be a mattress they're going to bring you an entire bed and open it up for you and give you an extra two set of pillow and the duvet and everything then you go to an oyo and ask for a extra bed you get an extra mattress right and it's you sleep on the floor so depends on the kind of amount we are charging and the kind of place we have so if it's a fine dining place they expect a lot of tweaks because the kind of money you're paying we need a value for the money um bang for the buck like we say If you find that many, I'm like, hey, I'm lactose intolerant. Can you please replace that with soy milk? And if you have soy milk, you go that extra mile to make it with soy milk. Also, depends on how much that men that dish can be tweaked to the customization they have. What if the dish doesn't taste good? The palate completely changes when you change the whole. So be open and frank about it, ma'am. See, we can't compromise on the quality of the dish. Why don't I suggest you another dish that you might like, which falls under your recommendation so this completely works on your service team how they handle the situation and bring out or upsell a product that the customer might like so maybe one or two tweaks like okay you don't want that to be deep fried okay you can shallow fry it if the essence of the dish is lost please convey it if if not just try to do whatever we can in the meantime but give them a warning that it might not taste exactly like how the chef would like to prepare it So Anjana, counter question is the same thing uh, coming across that in a menu. Uh, how to not get your consumers confused? Uh, for example, I have ten paneer dishes out of thirty or fifteen. Like half of it is paneer, half is paneer lababdar, paneer tikka, paneer koila, paneer lala, paneer this. So your clients get confused, right? Because it's paneer in like ten different forms. how many, how many should we actually realistically put and how to not get your consumers or customers confused because i personally feel when i see like 10 paneer i'm like what they don't have anything else and i can order just any paneer i'll just order the cheapest paneer that i find <laughs> absolutely yeah, because i just feel like oh it's paneer everywhere is paneer only that's so, where we need to get about yeah, like, right. uh, like uh, about repetitive menu and the same thing what do you recommend absolutely. repetitive ingredient uh keep it to only three or four items three or four dishes in the menu if there's a repetitive ingredient um unless it's an ingredient like salt right <laughs> so uh, for vegetarians if we catering to vegetarians be mindful that there are so many other options for vegetarians let's not put them down by saying there's just paneer or broccoli or carrots 
there's so much more there's so many more options you can uh, try to add uh, tofu you can add um, different kinds probably incorporate it in a different way as well if you want to incorporate that ingredient maybe um, there's a lot of vegan dishes that come up now which uh, silken tofu you blend it and then you add it with uh, lactose free curd to make a buttermilk or a chaas out of it so in that way maybe you can slightly incorporate but like you said if you see a lot of that repetition on the menu it feels like the chef was not at all creative the brand was not at all creative with their menu they just took one ingredient made 15 dishes to cut cost so let's keep it to like maximum five or six dishes and spread it across the menu maybe one paneer starter two three uh, main course and if you want it to add to dessert i don't know chena or some kind of whatever if you want to add it to dessert you can or two starters and three main courses like let's distribute it across categories as well i think this makes absolute sense uh, everyone i'm really sorry with this we will have to uh, have a hard stop right now but don't worry if you still have many questions uh, dia can you please share the link yeah sure i'll uh, please share the link so you can could you give me an example of your Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, we we have. You can just type in things on the chat, or else you can also reach out to Anjana directly from this link. You just have to fill in the form, and you can also put in your question. Uh, I think this was a great, super insightful uh, webinar on menu because this is a one of a kind. We have never done this topic before. and also this is in english so we have never done a topic before just in english so thank you so much anjana for such an insightful thing don't worry to the entire audience i think anjana you are stuck can you hear me yes i can hear you so uh, i think uh, so to the entire audience also you can just directly fill in the form or be a part of our whatsapp group we will be putting things there uh where you can directly get in touch with anjana with us with anyone and you can answer all the things um thank you anjana again for such a great webinar watch shen win like thank you so much amazing thank you so much looking forward to connecting with you all and once i get the inquiry form i'll try to reach out to you Financial side of questions, we both can take care of it together. Any hospitality related questions, I can take care of, and Aslam could take care of the uh, this thing. But before ending up, I'll just say that we run a consultancy firm in Kerala, but we do projects outside as well. We are doing one in Chennai. Um, so if you'd uh, like to reach out for any consultancy or anything, please reach out to us at Brunch Lab. Thank you, Pet Puja. Thank you so much. Looking forward to working with Pet Puja as well. I've already worked with a lot of clients with Pet Puja <laughs> in the future as well. So we are also too. We would love to connect all of you to you uh, again. You should also go follow her on Instagram. Her uh, Instagram handle is is thank God I'm fat. <laughs> thank God I'm fat. <laughs> so do follow her. She has great insightful uh, posts and reels that keep coming up. Or if you're following Pete Puja, you will see we have done a lot of collaborative things that you can follow up. Uh, so for next week, just to give a heads up to all the people till you're filling in the forms and things. Next week we are coming up with a great new product launch. Of course, Anshana will be inviting you also for the webinar to attend it. Okay. Um, okay. We are launching a new product with Pete Puja and PTM, which is a very awaited product that everyone has been uh, asking us since couple of years, or uh, since four or five years I've been working. So don't miss it out. Be on the WhatsApp group; you'll get all the updates. And Pete Puja is a restaurant management software. If any one of you has any queries, if existing users want to reach out to us for anything. Please feel free to do that. I will be your direct point of contact, so you don't have to worry about anything. And if you have any questions, don't worry. Put it in the same form. Anshara and I will take it up personally. Before you leave, please do give us a thumbs up, or if you like the webinar, or what topic you would want to have next time, in the chat box. We always love ending it on a good, uh, beautiful note. thank you everyone for being such a great audience we had such a great audience uh, all together uh, 141 50 people continuously there listening to you thank you so much have a great day everyone and good luck with everyone's dream projects and babies and businesses i hope everyone succeeds <laughs> and feeds a lot of tummies absolutely keep uh, keep putting in your feedback if you like the webinar or if you have any other feedback
आपको कोई नया दूसरा टॉपिक करना हो इफ यू नीड अ डिफरेंट टॉपिक नेक्स्ट टाइम पुट एनीथिंग दैट यू कैन आई डोंट वांट टू बी देयर जस्ट फॉर 2 मिनट्स बिफोर वी शट द वेबिनार फॉर श्योर फॉर श्योर हां फाइनली इट्स डन सुपर सुपर इंटरेस्टिंग वेबिनार थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू आई रियली लव्ड इट स्पेशली द इन बिटवीन पार्ट वेयर यू क्लियरली गिव फैक्ट्स about what to remove what to keep because i saw one question where someone was like i have so much of inventory everything gets goes to waste like what should i need what should i remove i think that part of the ppt is going to be so helpful for that person absolutely i'll i'll send you the ppt i'll send you the the edited pdf as well so you can yeah. just share it in the whatsapp group and like also you can just send it on the group or to the or anyone and she'll be yeah. sending it to us great Sounds thank you everyone now with this we'll be ending our uh, webinar thank you webinar on legal stuff like certification yes uh, we are actually planning one uh, before march because we want everyone to be free before filing their income tax on these things and i think anjana singh might be quite helpful that time again with the ca person yes absolutely he runs a company for doing exactly this as well yeah, so i think we we might need that before march for sure thank you anupam for such a great uh, feedback thank you so much see you guys bye bye thank you bye anshay it's okay you can take a leave right now uh bye thank you bye bye take care bye you too